The Ten Commandments goes on trial today in a Virginia court. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, today we're in court in uh, Virginia, in Roanoke, before the federal judge, and it's involving a case where the ACLU has filed suit against the Giles County School Board regarding a display that contains the Ten Commandments. It's the Foundations of American Law and Government display, and it has a number of frames, 11 frames total, and one of those frames is the Ten Commandments. It has an explanatory plaque regarding these particular documents, which include the Magna Carta, that is a pre-American document that suggests uh, that the king is even under the law, and that kind of gets the idea that the king is under the law and the king cannot make law, and all some other documents like the Declaration of Independence, the um, Virginia parts of the Constitution, and the Ten Commandments being one of those. And the ACLU has filed suit claiming that the Ten Commandments is unconstitutional. So we are in court today. And uh, that decision will be handed down a little later in the next several weeks. Well, Matt, I mean, we know that the ACLU would like to revise and, and scrub the historical reality that our nation and certainly our nation's laws were founded on a number of documents, among them the, the, the framers of the United States Constitution, unequivocally, the writing is, is clear, look to the Ten Commandments as, as one of the documents in, in, in helping to, to found uh, our legal system here in the United States. This is a historical display that is put up for that reason to, to give a, a big picture overview of the foundations of law, yet because there's reference to God, because there's reference to the Ten Commandments, the ACLU wants to, again, whitewash and scrub that, that historical reality, and so they're going after Giles County. Well, the interesting thing in this particular case is it's in a school, and it's on a hallway where this is there, and this individual uh, student, uh, on in this case, with his mother, with his parent, ultimately filed suit, and the ACLU is the ones uh, representing him. Now, uh, this particular display is there pursuant to a policy. And the policy says that people from the community can make recommendations and bring forth different displays that are historical or law-related, and uh, they have to then bear the cost for those displays. And if they're historical or law-related, relating to the city, the county, or the state, or the United States, then in fact those can be put up. So that's how this particular display was there, and that's why it's there. Private individuals recommended it. It's pursuant to the policy. It also says that other displays can go up as well. So yeah. what the school did was they created a limited form for community <coughs> expression related to law and government. Now, to the ACLU's chagrin, uh, during the before the discovery was done, there was other individuals that came forth, and they also recommended to put up different kinds of historical documents. So there's more than just the foundations of law and government display there on the wall now. There's also other historical documents, including, for example, Thomas's, Thomas Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptist regarding church and state issues and other uh, historic uh, documents from some of our founding periods are on there as well. Of course, that doesn't sit well with the ACLU because now there's a lot of documents on the wall, and the ACLU is really being forced to target one particular document. The other thing that's kind of interesting in this case is this uh, student during deposition said that he never noticed the Ten Commandments on the wall, and it was like a, a dusty old trophy to him. He just you know walked by it, never noticed it. It wasn't until the Freedom From Religion Foundation <laughs> sent a letter to the school and it hit the public news that he ultimately went down the same hall that he'd been walking down before, and lo and behold, there it is. So how in the world does he get so offended by this? And the final thing that's interesting for this case is the curriculum. We looked at the curriculum and the standards of learning, both in the Commonwealth of Virginia and books that are printed by Prentice Hall. Prentice Hall is a secular publisher. They're not a religious right Christian publisher. It's amazing that in their books, they actually have a like a historical tree about the development of law in the United States mm -hmm. of America. And guess what they say? That the Ten Commandments, <laughs> and they actually have the tablets of stone uh, in that historical developments, has been very influential in the development of law and government. And this young student had to study that. 
He doesn't remember it. He may disagree with it, but it was part of the curriculum, and it's been integrated into the curriculum, and this is by a secular publisher. Well, what's particularly uh, unnerving about this is these are ACLU attorneys who ostensibly went to law school and should have this base of knowledge. Unfortunately, not all law schools around the country teach the true history of our legal system and would even address the fact that the Ten Commandments is a foundational document to our our, uh, legal system here in the United States. So it may just be that... uh, uh, these ACLU attorneys are uneducated. Well, in fact, I will say that they are uneducated. We know they're uneducated, but I think there's more to it than that. As you know, the founder of the ACLU, Roger Baldwin, famously said, communism is the goal. What is part and parcel of communism? Well, the founder of com- communism, Karl Marx, said that this, uh, you know, the secret to happiness, essentially, is the abolition of religion. I believe that that is exactly what the ACLU wants to do here. They say that, that they are a civil liberty Union, but they are an organization that seeks to trample our first liberties, our freedom of religious expression. Well, it's really disingenuous uh, for this uh, lawsuit and this student with the ACLU claiming that one of these original 11 documents, being the Ten Commandments, (laughs) is unconstitutional, when the Declaration of Independence also mentions God as a creator, and the Magna Carta also, and many other documents are clearly part of our American law and government. And now the documents have expanded to other founding documents as well. And now the curriculum is there, and he has to study the curriculum. And it is part of a statewide learning outcome to learn about the origins of law and even our Judeo-Christian heritage. And it's published by a secular publisher. And he doesn't complain about that. He's gone through class. He's actually looked at the charts. Whether he was absent that day, I mean, it's several days because it's in several different books. He never complained about that. He walked down the hall, never even complained about the Ten Commandments being there until the Freedom From Religion sure. sent a letter. And then, of course, the ACLU picked up the, the legal uh, assault. So I don't think that they're in very good position. And so this is the issue that will be before the federal court Will the federal court take all of these documents and say they're okay, except for one, and then excise it from the wall, which is simply a manifestation of the curriculum, which is a permissible curriculum? Well, what the ACLU is doing here, and and this this kid is is – it's unfortunate that this this, uh, kid is being used as a patsy. I mean this kid is being used as a pawn in this this chess game, whether uh, the kid knows it or not. But what the ACLU is asking the court to do here – is is expressly, specifically, to engage in viewpoint discrimination. They're asking them to yeah. sift through all of the other documents that make this, in in, in the big picture, this uh, historical representation of our of our legal system and the history behind it. They say, no, no, no. You have to sift through all of that. Uh, single out the religious document, the the, the Ten Commandments, and cull that from the rest because we have to have religious cleansing in the United States. That's what they're pushing for. This is a perfect example. It's a metaphor for for the anti-theist left's uh, attempts to do just that, to scrub our history of, of any religion. And the Ten Commandments have profoundly influenced American law and government. In fact, we were at a federal court hearing in Kentucky, and Judge Forrest there specifically told the ACLU, you you may not like this, but the fact is the Ten Commandments have influenced American law and government. They may want to rewrite that history, but the fact is it's history. That's the reason why the United States Supreme Court has 50 or more displays of the Ten Commandments, both in and outside of the Supreme Court itself. Give Liberty Council a call. We have a pamphlet called The Ten Commandments in American Law and Government. You can order that pamphlet. It's very fascinating because it's part of our research that we ultimately uncovered as we began defending these Ten Commandments cases a decade ago. Actually, more than a decade ago, back in 2000. It's a fascinated read about how the Ten Commandments have actually influenced American law and government. You will be really surprised and amazed at the historical uh, value of the Ten Commandments. Call us today at Liberty Council, 1-800-671-1776. You can also go to our website at lc.org. And order some of our bumper stickers. We have a number of them. Don't Tread on Me bumper sticker or the Lord Deliver Us from Obamacare. That's our newest bumper sticker. You can ask for that by calling 800-671-1776. Ask for the bumper sticker, Lord Deliver Us from Obamacare. A decision will come down in June.